So good day everyone. This time we're going to talk about the 2017 Omnibus Rules on Appointment and Other Human Resource Actions. Section 3, Article 9B of the 1987 Constitution mandates the Civil Service Commission as a central personal agency of the government to establish a career service and adopt measures to promote morale, efficiency, integrity, responsiveness, progressiveness, and courtesy in the civil service. It shall strengthen the merit and reward system, integrate all human resources development programs for all levels and ranks, and institutionalize a management climate conducive to public accountability. Whereas, as a result of the leveling of interpretation of the 2017 Omnibus Rules on Appointments and other human resource actions and series of cascading activities done in CSC regional and field offices, certain amendments have to be made to ensure that the provisions of this policy are in accordance with other administrative issuances and pertinent laws. For the general policies on appointments, Rule 1, Section 1, the state shall ensure and promote the constitutional mandate that appointments in the civil service shall be made only according to merit and fitness. For Section 2, merit and fitness shall be determined as far as practicable competitive examinations. This does not apply to appointments to positions which are policy determining primarily confidential or highly technical. For Section 3, any action denoting the movement or progress of human resource in the civil service, such as promotion, transfer, reappointment, reinstatement, reemployment, reclassification, detail, reassignment, secondment, demotion, and separation shall be known as human resource action. Rule number two are the requirements for regular appointments. So the following are the requirements for the regulated and accredited agencies. For the permanent, temporary, coterminous, contractual, substitute, and provisional appointments, the following need to be prepared. Electronic file stored in compact disk, the CS form number one, revised 2018, and in the PDS and original copy of appointments. Both regulated and accredited agencies are requested to submit the following for appointment. The original copy of the authenticated certificate of eligibility, rating, license for original appointment, promotion, transfer, reappointment, change of status to permanent, or reemployment. Certificate of Eligibility issued by the CSC or National Police Commission or NAPOLCOM or Career Executive Service Board or CESBE or Valid Professional License issued by the PRC, Supreme Court of the Philippines, Maritime Industry Authority or Marina for positions involving practice of profession. For the requirements for appointment, Position description form is also included on this part. For both regulated agencies and accredited agencies, oath of office are both required. Certification of assumption to duty is also required. For Section 6, required documents to be retained in the agency. The following documents shall be required from the appointee in support of his or her appointment what shall be retained in the agency and filed in the employee's 201 file. So we have here the medical certificate or also known as the CS form number 211 revised 2018 which is a medical certificate issued by a licensed government physician which states that the appointee is a fit for employment, is required for original appointment, transfer, and re-employment. The following are also the requirements for appointment. We have here the certificate of life birth authenticated by the PSA or the LCR of the municipality or city where the birth was registered or recorded 
is required for original appointment and re-employment. Marriage contract or certificate for married employees are also requested. Clearances, a valid National Bureau of Investigation clearance is required for regional, original appointment and re-employment. Performance rating is also required. For appointment by promotion or transfer, the performance rating of the appointee in the last rating period prior to the date of assessment or screening, which should be at least very satisfactory, shall be required. Scholastic record or academic record is also part of the requirements for appointment. The certified true copies of scholastic academic record, such as diploma and transcript of records, or, if necessary, a certification from the Department of Education and or Commission on Higher Education on the authenticity and equivalency of the subjects or courses taken are required for original appointment, transfer, and re-employment. It may also be required for promotion to positions where the education requirement is different from the previous academic record submitted. For the rule number three of this resolution, which is all about the procedures in the preparation of appointments, section seven, the following procedures shall be strictly observed in the preparation of appointments for authorized positions found in the plantilla of personnel and lump sum appropriation for contractual employees. We have here the appointment form or the CS form number 33, revised 2018. The following items in the appointment form shall be properly filled in as follows. We have here the name of the appointee and then the position, title, salary job, pay, grade, and step. Employment status, the employment status shall be indicated on the space provided therefore. It may be permanent, temporary, coterminous, fixed term, contractual, or substitute or provisional. For contractual appointment, the duration of employment shall be indicated on the space provided for the status of appointment. Number four, agency should be indicated. The name of the agency shall be indicated in the appointment form. Compensation rate. The corresponding amount of the monthly salary or the position based on the salary, job, pay, grade, and salary steps, therefore, shall be indicated. The nature of appointment, which may be original, promotion, transfer, re-employment, re-appointment, reinstatement, Reclassification or demotion shall be indicated on the space provided, therefore. Plantilla information is also required. The name of the employee being replaced by the appointee should be indicated on the space provided. In addition to the plantilla item number of the position and the page where the position can be found in the approved plantilla of personnel in the current year. Then, the signature of the appointing officer or authority is also required. The three original copies of the appointment must be duly signed by the appointing officer or authority. Then, in case the appointing officer or authority delegates the authority to issue appointments to a next in rank official in the same agency as authorized by law, a copy of the office board resolution or order for the said purpose shall be submitted to the CSC field office with jurisdiction. In no case shall digital, electronic, or rubber stamp signature of the appointing officer or authority on the appointment will be allowed. And then we also have the date of signing. The date of signing, which is the date of the issuance and the date of effectivity of the appointment, shall be indicated below the signature of the appointing officer or authority. Then, 
the certification as to the completeness and authenticity of the requirements. The HRMO shall thoroughly review and check the veracity, authenticity, and completeness of all the requirements. Certification of publication and posting of vacancy is also required. Vacant positions authorized to be filled shall be published and posted in at least three conspicuous places for a period of at least 10 calendar days for national government agencies. And then, Certification of Human Resources, Merit Promotion, and Selection Board or the HRMPSB Evaluation Screening all appointees should be screened and evaluated by the Human Resource Personnel Selection Board, if applicable, and certification by the placement committee's reappointment to a comparable position as a result of reorganization pursuant to RA number 6656 or other laws shall be assessed by the placement committee as proof thereof, a certification shall be signed by the chairperson of the placement committee at the back of the appointment. For rule number four of this resolution, which is all about the employment status, nature of appointment, and other human resource actions, employment status in the civil service shall be determined by the appointment issued, which can be any of the following. It can be permanent, which means that an appointment issued to a person who meets all the qualification requirements of the position to which he or she is being appointed to, including the appropriate eligibility in accordance with the provisions of law, rules, and standards promulgated in pursuance thereof. Then, temporary. This is also an employment status, which means that an appointment issued to a person who meets the education, experience, and training requirements for the position to which he or she is being appointed to, except for the appropriate eligibility. Rule number seven, which is all about the publication and posting of vacant positions. Section 24, vacant positions in the career service, including vacant executive managerial positions in the second level that are authorized to be filled together with their corresponding qualification standards and plantilla item numbers shall be posted in three conspicuous places for a period of at least 10 days. And for Section 25, all agencies shall submit at least or a list of their vacant positions authorized to be filled in their corresponding qualification standards and plantilla numbers or CS Form Number 9, revised 2018, in electronic and printed copies to the CSC field office concerned. Rule number 7 of this resolution is all about the publication and posting of vacant positions. Section 24. Vacant positions in the career service, including vacant executive, managerial positions in the second level that are authorized to be filled together with their corresponding qualification standards and plantilla item numbers shall be published and posted in three conspicuous places for a period of at least 10 calendar days for NGAs, SUCs, and GOCCs with original charters in accordance with the provisions of RA number 7041 and its implementing guidelines and not less than 15 days for local government units pursuant to Section 80. And for the Section 25, all agencies shall submit a list of their vacant positions authorized to be filled in their corresponding qualification standards and plantilla item numbers or the CS form number 9 revised 2018 in electronic and printed copies to the CSC field office concerned. For rule number 8 of this resolution, it's all about the qualification standards. First is the part 1 which is all about the general policies. Section 31. 
qualification standards are the minimum and basic requirements for positions in the government in terms of education, training, experience, civil service eligibility, physical fitness, and other qualities required for successful performance of the duties of the position. This should serve as a basic guide in the selection of the employees and in the evaluation of appointments to all positions in the government. Part 4 refers to the on-training. Section 61, training refers to formal or non-formal training courses and HRD interventions such as coaching, mentoring, job rotation, seminars, workshops, and others that are part of the employee's individual development plan or career. These trainings, learning, and development interventions are intended to enable the candidate to successfully perform the duties and responsibilities as indicated in the position description form to be filled. These are evidenced by the learning and development plan, coaching, and mentoring program approved by the agency, head, and certificates issued by the HRMO or authorized official from the government or private sector. For the Rule 9 of this resolution, it talks about the Agency Merit Selection Plan and Human Resource Merit Promotion and Selection Board. Section 83, the Merit Selection Plan or MSP, shall cover positions in the first and second level and shall also include original appointments and other related human resource actions. There shall be no discrimination in the selection of employees on account of age, sex, sexual orientation, and gender identity, civil status, disability, religion, ethnicity, or political affiliation. And for Section 84 of this resolution under Rule 9, each agency may constitute two Human Resource Merit Promotion and Selection Board, one for the first and second level positions, and another for second level executive or managerial positions. And the 2017 Omnibus Rules on Appointments and Other Human Resource Actions, revised July 2018, shall take effect after 15 days from the date of its publication in a newspaper of general circulation or the official gazette. I hope you learned a lot from this topic which is all about the rules and appointment, the things that we need to know about this topic. So thank you so much for listening. And you may also download the file for this, this topic. Thank you so much and God bless.